Breon, the classic champion. Is Every single time I would send an update from the Wednesday all the way to Sunday morning, we got better. And <clears throat> what happened was is... What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to EP09. So we're going to start this one off with an update from Wesley Vissers. Wesley is only two days out from competing at the Europa Pro, where he'll attempt to earn his pro card for the Olympia. Now, looking at the lineup for the Europa, at first glance, I really don't see anyone that is going to seriously contend with Wesley for that win. I'm not familiar with all of the names here, but when you look at the latest from Wesley, just look at the striations through the shoulders, you guys. Look at the width of the back, the overall shape. He really is just an incredible classic competitor. Now, if Wesley does indeed earn his Olympia qualification this weekend, how does he move up in the Olympia placings? How does Wesley Vissers crack that top five? Well, Wesley has always needed to bring sharper conditioning and really just more size to the legs. Those are the things that Wesley has always needed. And Wesley does claim that his legs have come up in size and he is looking shredded in these updates, there's no question. Although I will say, I don't know if his legs are quite big enough yet based on what we're seeing. However, I do think that he still has some more filling out to do, I think he has some more carbs to introduce to the system, and when he does hit that stage in two days, I do think that we will see the best Wesley Vissers to date. So you guys let me know what you think of this version of Wesley Vissers. Okay, so next up, Breon Ansley has been steadily working toward his return to the bodybuilding stage with a bit of uncertainty regarding what division he's planning on competing in. So with less than 8 weeks to go until the Olympia, we have a physique update here from Breon and I gotta say, he is looking very impressive in this update. He definitely looks bigger through the upper body, but you know, the legs may still have some catching up to do, although I will say, they do look bigger than previous updates. Now the question has remained as to what Breon's plans are regarding the 2023 Olympia. He did announce his intentions earlier this year to compete in the 212, but he has not officially announced that he's received the special invite that he's been looking for. But on his most recent YouTube video, he did say in about two or three weeks that he will announce his decision. However, it looks like Chris Cormier just might have let the cat out of the bag on Breon. In this most recent episode of Olympia TV, Chris actually announced to the world what Breon's intentions will be. Will he switch to the 212 division or take advantage of the new weight cap limits in Classic? Check it out here. Breon, the Classic champion is back in classic let's go so apparently you guys breon will be staying in classic physique and i kind of had a feeling this was going to happen you can just see it in his posing he still poses like a classic physique competitor and i think this is a good move for breon i think he'll be more competitive in classic than he would be in 212 although a 212 breon ansley would have been very interesting to see now, with the increase in his classic physique weight cap, I think these guys said he could have in between 8 and 10 pounds that he can work with. Could that be enough for Breon to win back the classic physique Olympia title? Now, honestly, I don't think so. I think Chris Bumstead is just too dominant of a champion. And you gotta look at Ramon Dino, too. He's especially going to benefit immensely from this increase in weight. I think more than Breon will. So with seven weeks to go until the Olympia, you guys let me know in the comments below where you think Breon Ansley will land in the Olympia lineup this year, and what you think of his decision to remain in Classic Physique. Alright, so next up, we have an update here from Samson Dowda, and in this update, Samson is showcasing some of the progress he's made in his back, which was definitely heavily criticized as his weakest body part from both the Olympia and from the Arnold Classic. But with this comparison, I mean, there's no question at this point. Samson has gained not only more width to his back, but he has gained more depth to his back. You can see there's a lot more detail etched in and, you know, just more roundness overall, you guys. So Samson has taken his weakest body part, essentially, and he's made significant improvement. There's no question. And his back definitely is not the only thing that's improved on his physique. So with marked improvements and a ton of momentum behind him, it's really going to be very exciting to watch Samson transform over the next seven weeks. Alright, so next up, we have an update from Rubiel Mascara, aka Nexilla, and this guy is looking bigger and leaner with every update that we see. I don't even know how it's possible, but man, this guy is just an absolute monster. 
Now, we have been waiting for Rubiel to announce his first show to earn his pro card in the IFBB Pro League, and he hasn't announced anything as of yet as per competition plans, but he does look like he's within striking distance of pulling the trigger on a show soon. Honestly, earning his pro card should not be a problem for this guy. He could probably come in at like 85% and still win fairly easily. We saw Michael Crizzo do something similar when he earned his IFBB Pro League card in 2022. So I wanted to keep Rubiel on everyone's radar because I do do think he has the potential to be a force in the IFBB Pro League. For now, we'll wait for him to pick a show, and we'll be watching. Alright, next up, Regan Grimes has spoken out about what happened at the Flex Weekend Pro just last weekend. The online backlash for Regan has been pretty intense from what I've seen, and a lot of the bodybuilding fans out there feel like they've really been fooled by Regan with the editing and filtering of his physique updates leading up to the show. And honestly, I felt a little bit fooled myself. So Regan took to his YouTube channel to explain in extreme detail exactly what he did leading up to the show and what he thinks went wrong in Italy. Check it out here. Now, every single time I would send an update from the Wednesday all the way to Sunday morning, we got better and better and better. Like the look, we were improving every time. We were like gonna, we were gonna land the plane perfectly. And <clears throat> what happened was is uh, like it's so crazy because up to that time, every single check-in was perfect. And then we posed at this moment, and literally. It looked like I had put on an extra layer of skin, like like I had just lost the condition completely. I looked six weeks out, six to eight weeks out, and Milos was like freaking out. Um, we at that like he called after I sent him the video, and he's like, "Holy shit! Like I don't know, I don't know what happened." So we're we're thinking that we had some sort of a weird reaction to the tan, uh, my skin, some sort of an allergy or something and it just put inflammation and and i just started holding water so what do you do when you're looking like you're gonna hold water uh we're gonna have to pull it out somehow so what do we do we tried to pull the water out so I'll link the entire video in the description below for you guys, but Regan also goes on to say that they'll be tanning in advance in Spain, putting on tan days in advance, washing it off, repeat, and this is an attempt to ensure that he doesn't have another reaction and end up holding water like he did in Italy. I've heard of spray tans causing allergic reactions in the past, some of them very severe, but as for if I think Regan still has the ability to beat Nathan Diasha in Spain, well, I mean, you guys, absolutely he has the ability to do it. He's beaten Nathan before, but as we saw last weekend, we are talking about a very impressive version of Nathan Diasha. A lot of people say this is the best version they've seen of Nathan Diasha. So this Europa Pro is going to be very exciting, you guys, and there's a couple other competitors coming up in this show that were not in Italy. I'll outline that in a video before the show, but you guys let me know in the comments below if you think Regan actually will get redemption and defeat Nathan Diasha this weekend. Anyway, that's it for me in this video, you guys. Thank you for tuning in to EP09. Be sure to like and subscribe.